I'm a big believer that one man's trash may be another man's treasure, especially when it comes to secondhand golf clubs. Today, we've been given free reign of golf clubs for cash, and we're gonna try and stitch up one of my best friends. You see, we've done a golf clubs for cash challenge before. Guys, come and follow me in here, and I actually won. I didn't just win, I annihilated him. This golf pro was four up through five and lost. So we're gonna play something a little bit different. There's loads of fantastic golf clubs in here that some of you might want to buy. There's also some stuff which is a little bit questionable, probably quite difficult to use, and if it's not in your specs, would make golf very, very difficult. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pick the most obscure set possible. In fact, come inside, let me show you exactly where we're going with this. You see, we're taking on a PGA professional who has been struggling with his golf a little bit recently. I think it's fair to say, He's not the best PGA professional in the world. He's one of my best friends, so I can say that. But guys, we're gonna have a look at some different sets of golf clubs here, see exactly what we can use. Now, I've not seen what he's got for me, but I think he's got no holes barred. I don't think he's letting up at all. So the rules of this challenge are, you have to have a set of irons, you have to have a three wood, you have to have a driver, a hybrid, a specialist wedge, and of course, a putter. So we're gonna bear that in mind, and we're gonna kick things off with the irons, because for me, I don't want this pro to be able to have workability. I don't want him to be able to strike these irons well. Let's start over here. You see guys, now this could be the world's shortest video because basically I've got him this. That's what he's gonna have to use. There's no rules here, there's no budget. We can go as high as we want, as low as we want. Should I make him just play with these? He's got no idea what's coming. I think he's gonna stitch me up something rotten and this could well, we might come back to this at the end. We'll see if there's anything better to go at, but there's some fantastic, oh, I've done my back trying to put that down. That might be a really good way of getting him. There's some really good deals here, guys, if you do want some golf clubs, if you want blades, cavity backs, loads of different types of irons. And as part of me thought, do I stitch him up to a point where he can't hit these irons? We've all seen the videos that I did with the Ricky Fowler irons. These are a different set, actually. These have KBSC tapers, tore shafts in them but I don't want to be that polite. I don't want to be too nice to him. So we'll put these back again for now. We might revisit them in a moment, although I do have a really good idea on what to get him. You see, that's one side of the spectrum. If we go to another totally different side of the scale, there's so many good clubs here that you can go for. So if you want blades and they're fantastic, you can have the workability, but you're not going to get the forgiveness. And I came to the Callaway section and I was like, you know what guys, do I go full blooded here? What about them? Because they're going to have the forgiveness. There's loads of offset on these. They're almost like a kind of hybrid set of irons. There's not that many irons to choose from. There's four, six, eight, nine and sand wedge. It wouldn't really be fair. I'm going to get him a full set of irons. So we'll put these down as well. But you may be thinking, James, if you're not going blades and you're not going kind of full on forgiveness, what are you going to do? Come, what, honestly, watch this. You're not going to believe this, guys. So I'm a big believer that it doesn't matter too much what irons you use, as long as they're consistent, as long as an element consistency in loft, in shaft length, and that the set matches up nicely. Here we have a set of single irons and it's three for two. So the budget here is going to be spectacular. And it has to have a full set of irons. There's nothing to say it has to have a set of matching irons. So we're going to pick a nice three iron that it probably won't be able to hit. We'll go a nice bladed three iron here. That's a Titleist, so we'll let him off with that. That's the first club in the bag done. We'll put these, put these just alongside this grip station here so we know that he's getting a full set. Then we just come down a rung. We go four iron. Shall I go, do I go matching blade, four iron? Nice Ben Hogan. I think that'd be too easy for him because the three and the four would be very similar. So we'll put that back and we'll go, oh, I know, we'll go a nice, ping ISK4 iron because we've got no idea what lofts they are. Hopefully they're very similar lofts and the shaft lengths are pretty identical as well. Then we come down to the five iron. I hear what you're all thinking, James, what are you doing here? This set isn't gonna match. This set is not gonna match. It's gonna be cheap though, because the three for two, five iron, we're gonna go with this bad boy, just a little Nike number, big cavity back, big wide sole, huge blade length there. Coming from that four iron, he's not gonna know what's hit him there. And into the six iron, we move down the rung again. Lots of different irons here. So do I go bladed this time? I think we're gonna look at the shaft options here because those shafts all look pretty okay. But if we can get a club like this one, see this is very similar to the set that we were looking at earlier, the Callaway Edge six iron, 
loft wise i've got no idea what this is but it's a nice regular graphite shaft i think he's going to struggle in the middle of the bag there so we've got a couple of nice big clubs in there to go with we start to come down to the seven iron i mean this is glaring out at me straight away ping g15 again with a graphite shaft but i think that'd be too similar to the six iron so we're going to go totally different side here what can we go with? Tell you what, what about, oh yes. This is an old school Titleist 775 CB iron. It's got a ladies flex shaft in there. So how far is that gonna go? How far do you think it's gonna go, guys? Guys, also do me a favor, get in the comments below. If you were gonna do a challenge like this, you were gonna stitch up one of your friends, what clubs would you go for? Wait till you see the driver I've chosen for him. It's gonna be remarkable. I think I've kind of thought outside the box here nicely. That seven iron is exactly the same shaft length as the six iron. So we all know that 80% of the ball's distance is down to the shaft length and obviously the ball speed, the rest is down to the loft. So they should effectively be exactly the same club. Can we now get an eight iron that goes the same? Oh, I tell you what, guys, this is gonna be some challenge. We've got an idea eight iron is that an adams must be an adams is it, it is an adams on the the hosel there now that doesn't look bad but i really think you're going to struggle with that i think gaz is going to have a little bit of a nightmare shaft shafts are doing okay at the moment for him then we just need a nine iron and a pitching wedge so nine iron wise let's have a look i just want something that is really going to struggle to strike so we're going to go with a nice bazooka nine iron uh, max 45 again three for two so we're saving quite a lot of money here this is a nice used club grooves aren't looking fantastic but the grip looks good and that is longer than your eight iron fantastic um i actually saw something here as well guys so i'm gonna get him where are we how do you fancy a 10 iron there's no rules might as well throw one in there for him we'll throw a 10 iron in that's callaway that's a ladies one as well so again i think this is going to be a bit of a struggle i'm really not sure if i should have put another blade in there but we're not going to put him a blade of pitching wedge in because that wouldn't make sense at all match your 10 iron callaway big bertha pitching wedge look at the offset on that there is no way gary martin pj pro is hitting a green from 120 yards with that so that's the iron makeup we've got um <laughs> look at the shaft limb difference there we've got lots of different clubs there lots of different lofts now if he does want to go and check out the lofts and and test all these clubs and he can i think he's going to really struggle with front to back dispersion that could be a key for me to beat him not that i need a key because last time he was four up through five will he be four up through five this time guys comment below there the irons made up let's look at some wedges putters and we'll leave the driver till last because i've got the driver sword you're not going to believe what driver i picked him he's properly been stitched up so the big thing here guys we're looking at consistency levels and i'm a big fan a big advocate of buying second hand golf clubs saving yourself some cash especially if you come down here at golf clubs for cash but the thing for me is you have to know what you're doing you have to have a consistency level for not only your distance but kind of offset on there and shafts and stuff now the rule says we have to have a wedge we have to have a specialist wedge i've got no idea what gaz has got me hopefully it's something i can maneuver a bit but i don't know but i'm going to go the other way because gaz's chipping can be a little bit suspect so i'm going to throw him I'm going to throw him the dog's nuts of a wedge in. I'm going to put a Titleist Vokey wedge in there. He can't complain with that. I would hope he's kind of given me the grace of having a few golf clubs with big, nice names in there as well. But, but this is James Robinson golf. We're not going to make it easy for him. He's going to have a Vokey wedge. I have seen it somewhere with, has it been sold already? No, 62 degrees of loft on there. I think he's going to really struggle with this. I think if he plays this square, it's just going to go up. If he opens it up a little bit, he's not going to get the strike. And I think it might tempt him into taking on different golf shots. That's the big thing I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to tempt him into trying to play good golf. Because we all know when Gaz tries to play good golf, he might start quick, but he generally fades off and loses. So as you can see, there's loads of putters to choose from here at Golf Clubs for Cash. There's loads of fantastic, nice looking putters, to be honest. I mean, we've actually had a look around today and there's some putters that really have some nostalgia to them. This is a putter I had as a junior. I probably paid some of my best golf with a putter exactly the same as this. In fact, it might be. I always wonder when I come to a place like this, how many of these clubs are my old clubs? Because there must be some here. This putter's 249, so it's not a bad price. But if you would have bought this 10, 15 years ago for around that, You've not lost any money, any money on that putter whatsoever. That is scary. Obviously, we're not here to buy the best clubs they've got because we've done that before. Didn't work too well for Gaz. Sorry, mate. But 
I'm going to go. First of all, I thought, what about something like this? Because this has even got a little ball catcher in there. So if he did hole a putt, he could just get the ball out nicely and put it in his pocket. The problem for guys is he doesn't hole any putts, so that would be obsolete. There'd be no point doing it. So we're going to put that back because there's no point in him having it. I think I can stitch him up a little more than that. You see, I don't know what putter he's given me, but putting can sometimes be Gaz's strength. So if I go for a putter that's a little bit different and he has to change that skill set, look how much loft is on that putter. It is frightening. And look at that grip. It's got a side grip on it. So with this putter, you almost have to really press that forward, put your hand on it, and then try and get the stroke from there. I don't think he's going to be able to do that. I don't think he's going to be able to change that skill set up quite like I've just done there. So that's going to go in the bag. It is an SIK putter. It's not a cheap one. It's actually a really, really nice putter. If you do struggle with your putting, but I think this is going to catch him out. I think he might even, to be honest, just try using it like a normal putter. And if you do that with one of these SIK putters, there's too much loft on it and it just jumps off there. This is going to properly do him Hopefully, he doesn't have too much time to practice with this. Nice body. Otherwise, it might kick me in the backside. But that's the putter. Let's look at hybrid. Let's look at fairway wood. I've been promising you a good driver, haven't I? Guys, if you're still here, throw a like on this video. Comment below. Let me know you're still here. And if you could buy any club in here, what would you go for? Because there's some absolute steals. Right. Next club, hybrid. We've come over to the ping stand here, and I want to show you how many good ping clubs they have here. Ping are really, really kind of, in Yorkshire, I think they're kind of the people's club because obviously Lee Westwood used them and for so many years and so on. So we've got loads of different clubs here that you can get. We've got I-59s, we've got G425s, even onto the kind of the old school hybrids, and that's where I'm going to catch Gaz out, you see. Ping have made really good hybrids for a long time, but there's one that I remember from my pro shop days, which to be honest was just terrible. It was like too much like an iron. It was really rounded off, loads of offset. And as we know, we are trying to stitch each other up. There's no way I'm giving him a hybrid he can launch off the tee, especially with those irons. I'm hoping he's gonna have to use those bladed three and four irons off the tee. So we're going with the Ping K15. This is a five hybrid. Look how much offset is on this. I mean, I'm only just praying to be honest. Has it got a regular shaft? It has got a regular shaft in there as well. I think I've properly done him here. The rules said he has to have a hybrid. It never said what kind of hybrid. I think you're going to really, really struggle. I'm just hoping that none of the gentlemen here watching are kind of coming to buy, buy sorry mate, if you're going to buy one of these. I'm really hoping they're not because um, it's probably one of the worst clubs I've ever seen, but it's perfect for the set. We then move on to the fairway wood. Now the fairway wood's a funny one because with the driver that I've got, I'm hoping to entice guys into trying to play good golf. And I think he might fail at that. I think there, it's almost like tortoise in the hair. I think I can be the hair and kind of just beat him nice and gradually. So if we do walk down here to the Cobra fairway woods, I don't really want to give you an option off the tee. There's loads of fantastic fairway woods here that you can go for. There's loads of kind of the latest ones right down to the kind of old bio cells, amp three woods and stuff like that. I'm going to go in with the Cobra Max five wood. Again, I think I've stitched him a little bit on the loft there. It's a really, really high lofted one, but also there's loads of offset on there. This is going to be really difficult for him to try and keep in play. Gaz's bad shots are quick left, especially, let me guess, it's a light shaft. It's not even a regular shaft. This is a soft, regular light shaft. Loads of offset on there. That's his, wet, that, that's his wood setup so far. Guys, let's have a look at the driver. You are not going to believe what driver I've got in, in this set. This is it. Now, there's so many good drivers in here. You could go for a TaylorMade Stealth 2. You could go for a Titleist TSR 2, TSR 3. You could go for a Callaway Paradigm if you wanted to. I don't want to. There's no way that I'm giving Gaz something where he can keep in play. This is going to be an epic matchup. I won the last one. I expect to win this one. And I was thinking, right, Nike have made some of the worst drivers known to man. Hence why they are no longer making golf clubs. They make trainers, they make hats, they make waterproof trousers that Roy McIlroy wears and they look really good. But they don't make very good drivers. So I thought, you know what? Do I go in with something that he really, really struggles with? I mean, that thing, who remembers that? Regular shaft, big square thing. Ernie Els once described this as looking like a tuna can on a stick. That isn't my South African impression because I can't do impressions, but that's what. And then I thought, you know what? 
if he has a bad day off the tee, this is actually going to help him. So we're not going to give him that, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to put it back. He's not having that. He's actually going to have a club, which I think could be the worst driver ever made. I think you've got to be a really, really good golfer to be able to keep this in play and get distance with it. And Gaz ain't that. Gaz is not that guy. So we are going to go with... Where is it? I had it here. This is the Nike Covert driver that almost ended Rory McIlroy's career. It is one of the smallest driver heads you can get. It's really difficult to launch. This might backfire because if he has a good day off the tee, he could get this a long way. But I'm thinking Torson there. I'm thinking Gaz is going to really struggle to get this anywhere in the fairway. I think he might be able to turn it over, but turn it over into the trees or into the rough. Look how forward that CG is. That was the whole point behind this driver. There was nothing here. This is where your forgiveness is, ladies and gents. This is where you want the CG. This is where MOI would come in to help, but not for Gaz in this challenge. Guys, get in the comments below. Let me know what do you think to this set. Huge thanks to the guys here at Golf Plus for Cash for letting us have kind of free reign here. It's really, really busy. It's a Monday and I can see why it's busy because some of the clubs they have here in stock are ridiculous. But this is the set that I've made for Gary Martin. I don't think he's going to beat me with them clubs. Guys, thanks for watching. Smash that subscribe button. Can't wait to see you all at the same time tomorrow. Goodbye.